Well, good evening and welcome to the first of the Williamsburg Grange Hall's Fall 2020 Virtual Lyceum Lecture Series. As you can see on this opening slide here, the rest of the series. And uh, for more information, please uh, go to our website at www.thegrangehall.info. Um, so uh, just to get started tonight, my name's Andy Buchanan. I'm the uh, chair of the uh, Wellensburg Grange Committee that organizes the Lyceum Lecture Series. And I also uh, teach uh, history at the University of Vermont. And I'm the presenter of the first lecture in the series, The Global History of uh, Pandemics. I, I, I should just explain that uh, when we first gave, when I first gave this lecture uh, earlier this week, there was a technical glitch, which meant that the first a uh, few minutes of the lecture were not uh, included in the recording, so uh, we are re-recording them this afternoon and uh, are uh, going to splice them in to uh, make one complete uh, complete recording. So you may see some changes in the format as we uh, about ten five or so minutes into the in, in, into the lecture. So anyway, um, the uh, purpose of tonight's uh, discussion and the first thing I want to uh, talk about. Uh, is really to um, signpost some of the main aspects of human interactions with infectious disease uh, and to uh, outline some of the ways that we can think about those relationships over uh, uh, over time. Um, for obvious reasons, I'm not going to be able to go into any great detail. We're covering a lot of, of ground here. Uh, and um, I'm also not going to uh, say a great deal about the uh, current uh, pandemic, although uh, that uh, issue, of course, might come up in the question and answer session following the following the talk. Following the talk, um, so the first point I want to make, and it's one when 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 we're thinking about infectious disease and 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 the whole of human history, um, that makes my job a great deal easier, which is to say um, that for the uh, great majority of time that uh, human beings have uh, ha have, be have been on the earth, um, both uh, Homo sapiens and our immediate, uh, our immediate ancestors, um, living as uh, hunter-gatherers, small uh, bands of nomadic, semi-nomadic hunter-gatherers. Um, during that entire period of, of human history, uh, there really uh, was no infectious disease in uh, human populations. The population densities were simply uh, too low to support person-to-person uh, -person transmission of, uh, in, of, of, of infectious disease. Um, Paleolithic people certainly did have contact with, uh, with uh, deadly uh, pathogens, uh, rabies, tetanus, and so on. Um, but there were no uh, infectious disease transmissions from uh, within those human uh, those human uh, population human populations. So infectious disease really comes into human populations uh, with the uh, domestication of uh, animals uh, at the beginning of the uh, Neolithic period. The transition from hunting and gathering. Uh, to, uh, to to farming and uh, as um, human beings live in close proximity to domestic domestic animals uh, often uh, sharing uh, living space uh, we uh, the conditions are created uh, for the uh, zoonotic uh, transmission of infectious disease uh, from uh, from animal populations to the human to hu to human populations. Um, so this is really very much the origins of infectious disease in human human populations really really very much linked uh, to the uh, beginning of farming the close interaction with uh, with with animals that results uh, the results from that and of course uh, in addition to that the uh, generally uh, poor uh, sanitation uh, uh, conditions prevailing in early Neolithic uh, settlements, uh, adding to the uh, to, 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 to the environment uh, conducive to the uh, spread of, uh, of 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 infectious disease. I, I wanted to start with this because it's it's kind of important to note that that far from being exceptional, um, you hear a lot of talk about uh, the origins of coronavirus, for example, amongst uh, bat populations in China, as this, as this, uh, as if this was something extraordinary. Uh, in fact, uh, the uh, passage of infectious disease from animal to human populations, the zoonotic transfer of disease, um, is actually a normal route into human populations of infectious uh, 
uh, of, of, of infectious pathogens. So, so I'm starting here to think about the ways in which uh, the spread of uh, 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 infectious disease in human populations is uh, governed by uh, population densities, and those population densities are themselves uh, a product of the transition from hunting and gathering uh, to, 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 to farming. And then, of course, as, as the capacity to create social surplus increases to store um, food from one season uh, to, 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 to the next, um, to begin uh, to raise agricultural productivity, um, the beginnings of the emergence of class divided uh, societies, the uh, emergence shortly afterwards of, uh, of the beginnings of town and city uh, populations of, ur of urbanization, the increasingly dense population centers that become more and more conducive to person for person to person uh, transmission of infectious disease. And then uh, within this framework, the increasing uh, emergence of networks of tr of long of long distance trade of global of global connectivity uh, providing also, of course, uh, in addition uh, to transmission of goods from one end of Eurasia to the other. I'm thinking here particularly uh, of the uh, uh, of the network of routes collectively uh, known as the uh, as the Silk Road, uh, increasingly providing uh, vectors uh, for the long distance transmission uh, of uh, infectious disease. Or to another another uh, another conclusion, um, which is really to 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 think about the infection of the the. Uh, the emergence and development of, of infectious disease is something that's, that's really entirely dependent, entirely dependent on the development of human societies and reflects the levels of development of those, of those, of those societies. In, in, in that sense, um, although clearly invo involving microbial agents, viruses or, or, or bacteria, the development of uh, of infectious diseases is, is, is a product of humans of the development of human society. I, I mean that sounds kind of obvious. Um, I think it's worth underscoring it because we often um, speak as if disease has a sort of independent life, has independent agency. Um, you hear it a lot um, today. People talking about the coronavirus makes us do this or the coronavirus makes us do that. N not really. Um, what makes us do things is the hu is the human response, is the human interaction with the with the disease, which is a, which is a different different matter. So I wanted to start by just sort of really rooting this whole discussion in the development of of, of human societies and the, of their of their evolution. So I, I want to say a little bit tonight talking about the patterns of these relationships between excuse me between disease and human society over over a long s sweep of history. And I, I, I'm going to start by just, uh, many of you I'm sure are already familiar with a bunch of this, but I, I want to start just by, you know, getting a sort of survey, uh, a very a brief survey, but of some of the, I, I hesitate to say highlights of this story, but, 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 but I'm, the main, the main sort of, some of the main features. So I, I want to start by just saying a word or two about, the, about bubonic, bubonic plague. Um, the first pandemic in the 540s, really the first, which was really the first major uh, global pandemic. Um, the second plague pand pandemic in the, in the, from 1347 to the, into the 1350s. Um, I, the current estimates are, are, are somewhere in the region of 100 million people killed worldwide, dying, die, dying worldwide, reducing the global population by about 20, 25%, somewhere from about 450 down to about 350 million um, population levels taking maybe 150 or 200 years to get back to their pre-plague levels um, reaching into every part of, of the uh, of the afro-eurasian uh, world um, uh, new research on africa today uh, 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 re reinforcing that view new evidence of the, of the globality of the spread of this disease and, and, and 50 to 70 percent mortality. In other words, if you contract, if you contract bubonic plague, 50, or 50 to 70 percent of those who contract it are going are gonna to die. Entire villages eliminated, and, 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 and so on. So pretty, pretty, pretty drastic. Um, the second one, 
I want to look at very briefly smallpox, um, endemic in, in, in Eurasia uh, from, from, from very early in, 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 in the Neolithic era, farm, the farming era, um, but uh, transmitted, <coughs> excuse me, transmitted into the New World in the, in the early 1500s and in the context of the wars of conquest over, over the next, uh, over the next uh, uh, 100 years or so. Uh, again, the estimates vary, but somewhere in the region of 90%. I mean, these are, these are stunning figures of 90% of the Amerindian population killed by, killed by smallpox and other diseases brought by the, European, by, by, by the Europeans, Spanish conquistadors and, or, 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 or others. Uh, thirdly, tuberculosis, endemic in the, in the, in the crowded, unsanitary conditions of the industrial industrial revolution estimates vary but by the by the 19 in 19th century britain in the 80 by the middle of the 1800s let's say in britain somewhere somewhere around 25 percent of, of of all deaths i mean that's a staggering figure of, of all deaths um being uh, attributable to to to, to tb influenza again zoonotic transfer uh, probably from duck populations to the human population in China. Pandemics of influenza from the, from the, 18, from the 1700s, from the 18th century, uh, usually high, high morbidity, um, but low mortality. In other words, easy to catch it, but relatively, relatively non-lethal. And then the 1918, 1919 H1N1 subtype, uh, Cause, producing over 100 million deaths world, world, worldwide, uh, transmitted uh, in part at least by the uh, movement of military forces around, around, around World War I, and particularly and unusually and particularly virulent amongst, amongst, amongst young people. Uh, cholera, a disease of the British, fundamentally a, a disease of the British Empire emerging in, in the British colony of India. Uh, seven pandemics sweeping throughout the sort of connect the, the connections the in, in, international imperial connections, the shipping routes, the, the movement of military forces of the of the British Empire, um, killing with with terrifying speed. Literally, a disease where you can be totally well in the morning and and dead a couple and couple of hours a couple of hours later. And the final one I just want to highlight. Um, the pandemic that many of us have, many of us actually have experience of living through, although in many ways it's now a lot now forgotten as a pandemic. Uh, it's true scope, I think, forgotten in the in the West, certainly not forgotten in in Africa. Is is AIDS, um, and again, um, the figures on this are really staggering: five hundred thousand people in the United States dying of of AIDS over that over that period, and about another thirty two million worldwide. I mean, these are th these are th these are really staggering staggering figures and again i say i i'm, I'm sort of underscoring the idea that that that, 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 that 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 particularly with aids obviously something that many of us have have lived through have known people who who, who died of were, were 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 around were around that um i i've just really highlighted some of the major the major pandemics here um i i could have i i i, I other diseases could eat, could clearly be included, which continue to have, some of which continue to have deadly deadly uh, consequences today: malaria, yellow fever, typhoid, typhus. I mean, there's a there's a long list, but I I don't want to just I, I want to just to sort of give those figures to, to to sort of to think about the scope of what we're talk what we're talking about, um, and 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 obviously the potential for the impact of these diseases on human on on on, on human societies. Um, some of these have uh, really uh, world-changing uh, uh, consequences in terms of the human response to them. Uh, I, I'm just going to highlight a couple here. But uh, the, the, the point I'm kind of thinking about here is, is while, while many of these disease, while, while many of these pan pandemics I've been talking about have, 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 have huge mortality, have huge kill, kill large numbers of people, their social impact is, is, is differentiated. So, for example, the first I mentioned it earlier that the, the, the first uh, uh, bubonic plague pandemic in the five in the five forties, um, centered in the eastern part of what had been the Roman Empire, uh, really disrupts the attempts to re-establish a unified Roman Empire. 
it, it, it essentially undermines just the Emperor Justinian's reconquest of, of, of Italy, um, and it undoubtedly weakens the, um, the Byzantium in terms of its uh, military defense against the Islamic Caliphates uh, a, little bit, a, a, a little bit later. So, I, I mean, arguably, uh, bubonic plague factors into the overall picture of the decline of the Roman Empire, the Eastern Roman Empire. It's, in, in, in this period. The second, the second uh, bubonic plague pa pandemic, the Black Death, uh, also has, has, has very, very uh, substantial uh, social, con social consequences or factors into very substantial social consequences. Um, I think historians now of the, late, of the late Middle Ages and sort of early modernity, that the period from the decline of feudalism to the beginnings of the emergence of capitalism in Europe would Many would now argue that, 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 that the impact of the Black Death was, was, was a very significant event in that transition, um, coming at a time when feudalism was already having all kinds of difficult economic difficulties. Um, but um, the, sh the, 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 the shortage of laborers, the shortage of peasants, as a result of the mortality of the Black Death, um, you know, when labor's short, it, it's, it, it, if, if labor's short and it's organized collectively, there's a, it, it, that situation can be leveraged to the advantage of the peasants. Um, and that, I think, was certainly the case in, 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 in late feudal Europe. Um, you see a weakening of the nobility, a weakening of their hold on the, on the, on the, on the, on the lower classes, peasants and, and, and merchants, and a strengthening of the position. In fact, you see a whole series of, of very major rebellions uh, you know, the peasants revolt in, in Britain, but in other, uh, in other parts of Europe as well, um, which really signaled the decline of feudalism and increasingly the emergence of new capitalist social relations. So, 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 so again, sort of thinking about the way, that, the way that disease sort of factors into broader social and political, political developments. And then, of course, I, I don't know. For me, it's very, very hard to imagine the, uh, the, the Spanish uh, conquest of the Americas, the overthrow of the Aztec Empire, the overthrow of the Inca Empire. Um, you know, we often tend to think of these as somehow uh, sort of lesser or something weaker than the, than the European Eurasian empires, but it, it's, it's, really not, it's really not the case. Uh, yeah, they lack, they lack firearms, they lack horses, um, but these are, these are, these are large, well-organized imperial societies, powerful nobilities, dominating big areas of territory, large resources. And I, 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 and I forget, Cortez's band is maybe 60 or something like that. I mean, these are tiny numbers. Um, I mean, they get some native allies, um, but in the critical phases of the conquest, they're, they are, they're, 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 they're greatly assisted by by the impact of, of, of smallpox on, 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 on Aztec society and then later on, the, on, 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 a few years later on the Incas. I, I think it's impossible to imagine um, uh, th those conquests succeeding or certainly in anything like the time frame that, the, that they did succeed in without, without, the impact of, without the impact of disease. So again, thinking about the, the, the weight, the significance of that. On, on the other hand, some some very, very deadly uh, outbreaks, disease outbreaks, uh, virtually disappear from history. And I'm thinking here in particular of the, of the uh, influenza outbreak after the, in, in, at the end of World War I, uh, which I've mentioned earlier. Um, the influenza outbreak kills many, many, many more people than the war itself. About 15 million combat casualties in World War I, um, and about 100 million people killed by the flu. So, I mean, if you simply looked at it on, 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 on sort of death, death rates, the flu is far more influential, um, but of course uh, occurs at a time of uh, massive social dislocation of revolutions, Russian Revolution in 1917, the German Revolutions in, in 19, no, 1918 into the early 1920s, the collapse of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, the, a whole series of other other major political events which 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 really dominate the the, the, the history and i think correct correct correctly so um, i don't think that the 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 the, the 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 flu pandemic factors into that as an independent factor in any in any in any substantial substantial way um and and of course uh i mean there's a little bit more attention paid to it now but you can you can read entire I mean, serious histories of World War One that, that simply don't, that this has simply disappeared from their history. Well, it needs to come back into the history, but, but, in, its, but, in, its, but in its proper port, pl place. So, so, so I guess the point, I, the point I'm making here is, 
the, the, this, long, this long sort of roster of, of deadly uh, disease um, events, um, but having very, very differentiated impacts and that, def that, that differentiation, a factor of, of the development of, of, of human societies, their connectivity, the other things that are, the other things that are go 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 going on. Okay. So, so, so I want to think a little bit in the final little couple of sections of this talk about the character of the impact of disease on specific uh, societies. Um, I think it's a general characteristic of, 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 of uh, pandemic disease that it, that, that it appears in any given individual society, it appears an, as an exogenous event. That's to say it appears as something that comes into your society from the outside. Of course, when you think about history as a global, as a global, a, 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 a global thing rather than a national thing, that's not really that's not really true. It's <clears throat> disease is always an, endogenous to human society somewhere. Um, Central Asia, in the case of the Black Death, for example, but it appears in Western Europe, or it appears in in Egypt, or it appears in the Mediterranean world, coming from out coming from outside. So it has this. It, it, it tends to have this, this, this factor of this element of something that's sort of hitting us from, from someplace, some, someplace else. Um, the image here from, from, from uh, Albrecht Durer of, of, the, of the four horsemen of the, of the apocalypse, that, 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 that sense of divine, divine punishment, God's punishment on, uh, on the sins of on the sins of society or, 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 or on, on individual sins, trying to, trying to explain this, trying to understand it. Um, again, I'm looking here particularly at Europe and the Black, and the, and the, and the black Death, um, the, 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 the violent, the violent uh, 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 reaction to, to, to people seen as, seen as outsiders, those who, who may be bearers of disease in some fashion, maybe poisoning the wells or, bringing disease into through their religious practices that, that are different from from ours those kind those kind of ideas and and, and, and this is really fuels the first great wave of anti-semitic pogroms in in Europe 200 or more Jewish communities are are, are targeted some of them some of them are, are completely exterminated in Strasbourg famously set several hundred of the numbers are, are still up like, there's, there's no real agreement, but you can read up to up to a couple of thousand Jews are, are, are burnt to death in a, in a huge bonfire in the center of the in the center of the city as the, uh, to, 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 to seek to avoid the, 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 the plague, the, the, the Black Death, um, and other uh, reactions to that sense of divine punishment in Western Europe, for example, processions of of flagellants going going from town to town, beg, begging arms from town to town, and, and, and flailing, flailing, flailing their backs, ble bleeding, bleeding backs, and and and, and, and uh, you get the sense. I, I, you, you hear this in other in other in in, in other uh, uh, circumstances. Uh, the reference. Okay, better. Okay, uh, the, the 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 description of the influence of the of the influenza epidemic in 1918-19 as the Spanish flu, the reference to cholera uh, in British literature as the as the Indian disease, those kind of ideas. I I I, I I'm obviously sort of referencing the the the, the current description of COVID-19 as the Chinese. Chinese disease or so you know those kind of ideas something coming in from the outside I, I would say before before those of us in the in the north country here get too smug about that I I, I think we've we, we've we've felt we've we've been we've been buffeted by some of those same ideas the out-of-state people or the downstate people or the people from the cities who are coming you know those kind of those kind of notions us and othering the us and them sort of notions that become very um, very uh, 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 powerful in these kind of these kind of situ these kind of situations. Um, so these 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 notions, the outside, the the, the the event breaking in from the outside, 
uh, inexplicable, often revealing existing social divisions, class inequalities, Excel. I love this painting, by the way. This is this is uh, this is uh, Peter Bruegel from the 15, 1560s, and he's. So if you if you dig into it in detail, you've got just about every form of violence and disease and bodies, carts full. I mean that sense of a society coming becoming completely, coming becoming completely un, 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 unglued. Um, the ways in which the ways in which disease and particularly the fear generated by disease can can factor into these. I, I don't think it creates them. I think it reveals these pre-existing these pre-existing fault lines, tensions, class div, class, class divisions. Um, in the in the in the bubonic plague, beginning in the plague of Justinian, the, the, the many of the many of the records record many of the many of the observers record the, the abandonment of family members. People fleeing, leaving wives, husbands, children, to fend, to fend, to fend uh, for the fend for themselves. Uh, uh, the attachment to quack remedies, the the the, the, the grasping after apparent uh, apparently easy easy solutions, the the the, the, the exposure of, of 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 social practices. I, I'm thinking particularly, for example, of the. The, uh, the 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 way in which p p pandemic can reveal, for example, how societies how societies treat their older people, uh, where they where they house them, under what conditions they house them, those kind those, those kind. This is not this is not new to this is not new to to this current to this current uh, cr crisis. It's also worth noting, I think, that that that, that in, in 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 big chunks of uh, uh, of the world, particularly in the in the colonies. Um, measures to, uh, to, 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 to try and dip by, by colonial authorities, I'm thinking here particularly of the British colonial authorities in India, but it's true elsewhere, uh, acting in the name of science, objectivity, etc., etc., but, to try, but, to, but, to, but to try and get control of, of cholera and other infectious diseases, uh, quarantines, vaccinations, isolation programs, etc., even mask wearing. Uh, can easily become can easily and not necessarily incorrectly in, 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 in be seen as, as tools of as, and tools of imperial of imperial control of reaching into to try and deeper into native societies to, to try and control them. So so all of these are sort of th these are some common these are some common co common common elements. Um, at, at the same time, and I'll end on this thought because it's a little bit more cheerful. Uh, pandemics pandemics ha have also. Not surprisingly, prompted advances in, in, in medical in medical science. Uh, the the notions of contagion, of contagious disease, uh, really begin with the Black Death in European and and, and uh, medicine to some degree in the Islamic in the Muslim in the in the Muslim world. It, it's not understood what the processes of transmission are, but it but it but it but it's increasingly understood that groups of people together. Provide 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 fertile ground for the transmission of disease. So the beginnings of the beginnings of quarantines and those kind those kind of med the first uh, health the, the the first health boards are formed in in Italy, for example, in the in response to the Black Death. Public measures to clear, clean the streets and 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 those kind of things. So, um, and then of course right through to the to, to the to the discovery and isolation of microbial agents in the in the nineteenth century. Uh, and the programs of vaccination, public health that begin to begin to accompany that. I, I would also say, and this is my kind of final thought here, uh, that, 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 that as well as producing crisis, disunity, et cetera, et cetera, it's, it's also totally possible. It's totally possible for, 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 for disease, for the disease episodes to, to promote the opposite, um, to promote greater solidarity, uh, collaboration, cooperation, um, and think it, where, where, where there's conscious political leadership to 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 to, to do that. I'm thinking particularly the, the most recent example, although one could certainly point to others historically, um, uh, uh, in, in 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 Cuba, uh, the, the not only the ability to control the spread of COVID-19 in Cuba, but also the the dispatch of volunteers to to other parts of the, other parts of the world, including to to Italy, 
when that was really the epicenter of the outbreak and, 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 and volunteers taking with them the experience of already having, uh, having volunteered to, to, to respond to the Ebola outbreak in, 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 in West Africa. So, uh, so it, like the point, I guess, and this is the, this is the sort of concluding, the concluding, the concluding thoughts uh, and looping back to that idea of the beginning of these, um, of, the, of these being, being re deeply related to both in a certain sense products of and certainly deeply related to the development of human societies. There's, there's nothing natural about these, the course of the diseases. This is a question of the organization of human beings, how we, how we respond with the values with which we respond, um, the ways with which we try and overcome the, the fear and the divisions and the other, the other consequences of, uh, 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 of, of epidemic disease, pandemic disease that we've been talking about. So anyway, I think I'll leave it there. I, there you go, Elizabeth, just over 35 minutes. How about that? Um, and uh, we'll uh, take some questions and comments and, and see what you, all, what you all want to talk about. Thank you, Andy, for kicking off our, our virtual Lyceum. And we do have a few questions. Um, if you would be willing to talk about them. Um, Stephen Jones asked the question, what is known about pandemics in the pre-Columbian Americas? Um, okay, that's a great question. Um, I'm not an expert on that, but I, but the, but my but the only the only disease that I've ever seen attributed as a, as as an infectious disease with I, it's not exactly pandemic potential, being quite the same way amongst Amerindian populations, but is is, is syphilis. Um, it, it's certainly the case that the first major outbreaks of syphilis in Europe happen. Uh, within a couple of years of, 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 of the return of Columbus from, from, from the New World. So you, there, there's certainly accounts that sort of will look at, um, you know, it's a pretty modest sort of payback, um, but we'll sort of describe it in those, in those kind of terms. Um, it, it, it's certainly possible, although I, I, I've never seen any reference to, um, to, to infectious disease in 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 the um, in, in uh, Mesoamerica, Aztec, in Inca, Maya um, populations, I, I I suspect that the absence of of large uh, mammals, domesticated animals, um, minimised uh, zootic uh, transfers to human populations. And of course, the, the 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 Amerindian populations in the in the northern part of the continent were, were still. Um, essentially, too, um, although they were they were certainly they were certainly beginning a transition towards farming, um, but was still uh, po the population densities were still too light to support um, infectious disease. But maybe someone else has some so, some thoughts or comments on that. Um, thank you. Uh, I think maybe we'll try and take um, a couple of more questions, and then maybe we'll be able to loop back around to some op opening up to the dialogue. And I appreciate everyone's um, patience while we use this process. In the future, we may try a different process, and, um, but let's go for another question. So Marinelle asked the question, were there notable responses by nation states to previous pandemics, such as closing borders or other actions that had consequences for international relations? Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, from the, from the, the cholera pandemics in particular um, produce, um, uh, produced responses from 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 nation states, um, in particular in the British Empire, they set up a whole bunch of, of essentially quarantine stations in Egypt and other other places that are sort of viewed as the access points to to, to, to Western Europe and, and impose and impose quarantines on people people coming in um, for, for, from uh, you know from India and and, and, and elsewhere. So. Um, there's certainly other examples of, 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 of modern European states. I'm talking about 18th, 19th century. I mean, really 19th and 20th century states imposing imposing controls. Um, you know, having the having the having the character of sealing their borders for temporary periods and and, and, and stuff like that. I'm not really aware of anything where where that where those promote particular diplomatic difficulties or dif di di diplomatic con conflict. I don't know if you had a particular. A particular thing in mind, but certainly by the by the middle of the of the nineteenth century, the, the, those kind of responses, state state level responses, start to start to begin and obviously accelerate into the into the in, into the twentieth century. I mean, part of the problem with the influenza pandemic in the nineteen eighteen nineteen nineteen pandemic was 
was, was simply the, the, the overwhelming of, of state resources by the fact that they were still engaged in fighting or concluding a major war and the, the political upheavals that, I, that, that I've talked about certainly made, a, made a, a political response by individual nation states a little bit, a, a little bit more difficult. Thank you. Uh, we have another question from Lynn Harrison. What is the definition of pandemic? The definition of a pandemic. Okay, there's basically three for forms. There's endemic, which is when an infectious disease is, is, has a base level permanent existence of, in a population. There's an epidemic, which is a, which is a virulent outbreak in a, in a more localized area, an individual country or group of, group of countries or subcontinent. And then pan, a pandemic, which is the spread of infectious disease to uh, 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 usually over more than, and certainly today we would say over more than one continent, um, but multi-state, multi multi multinational spread over substantial geographic, ge geographical areas. Thank you. And um, what about polio, asks Adi? Um, what about polio? I mean, polio is, I mean, the interesting thing about polio, about polio and smallpox both were, were, were have been uh, certainly in the, well, pol smallpox has been eradicated by, by vaccination worldwide. Uh, polio, at least in the, in, in, the, uh, in, in, the, in the advanced countries, in the economic co countries in the West. Um, but but, but um, uh, polio, um, had more of a had more of an endemic character of a permanent rather than big, rather than big, big big surges so i didn't actually include it in the in in the talk although obviously it, it would be it, it would be a candidate certainly in terms of permanent permanent uh, in it, permanent injury if not necessarily the death although that's 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 present too um thanks um, I have another question. Um, I'm, um, I'm very interested in the impact of, um, or, or whether or not we would define the impact of disease, specifically smallpox on the indigenous population um, that were native to North America. And do you have any data um, or maps? Or, or are you aware of any maps that really report from the perspective of the people affected, what the extent was, would that be an epidemic, a pandemic, what uh, part of the greater global pandemic? I mean, at the time it occurs, there is not a global small, I mean, I'm fit from the 15, basically from the early 50, I think 1517 is the first outbreak um, onwards. Um, there's, it's, it's endemic in, in Eurasia. Um, it's, there's some question about whether it's actually brought to the new world by people, by humans, or by, by pigs, by animals. Um, the, the, the Spanish bring a lot of uh, pigs with them um, because they basically fend for themselves, root for them. Root, and, and so, so in the Caribbean, you have a pretty substantial pig population quite, from quite early on. Um, so that's one of the, one of the theories of, 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 the, of, the, of the root end. To, 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 to Amerindian, Amerindian society. It certainly spreads pretty rapidly uh, once, once, that, once that begins. Um, again, the, 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 the usual arguments, and I, I think the, 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 the explana one of the explanations of that is certainly the absence of large domesticated mammals in the, in, 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 in the Americas. So there, there, there's, there's no immunity, there's no experience of these uh, of, uh, of smallpox or other zoartic diseases. And this main, I, I have to say, there's an issue which, which historians go back and exactly how much of this is smallpox, how much of it is typhus, how much of it, I mean, there's other, there's, a, there's, there's a, certainly a cocktail of diseases here. I mean, it may be too simplistic to lump it all into, into, into smallpox. Um, but these, um, the image, I, I think the image I showed is the background image. If I go find it again. Uh, this one. This is actually from a. This is an uh, 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 an Aztec uh, coda, um, and you can see pretty pretty graphic depiction of of of, of smallpox of smallpox scarring um, on these on these on these figures. Um, so 
I, I don't think there's any doubt that smallpox is 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 the major element of, of, of this in, in, in the new world. And, the, and, and, and as I say, combined with, the, combined with the military assault, combined with the general dislocation of, of, of uh, Indian society, this is absolutely devastating. And of course, there's a sort of bow wave effect by the time, by the, by, by the time European fishermen arrive in, 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 on the coast of Maine, for example, uh, uh, a little bit a little bit later they're already finding villages that are that are already totally emptied by by, by disease so um the, the 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 european contact in north america to, to a fairly significant degree at least on the east coast is sort of preceded by by a wave of by a wave of disease so um, again um that that question of the intersection of disease and, and, and colonial conquest is is very much the, I think that the sort of major the main the main story. I don't know if that totally answers your question, but thank you. Um, question from Harry Chaucer. Welcome, Harry. Nice to see you this evening. Um, who asks prior to the identification of disease? I think that is intended to say vectors. What was the explanation of the transmissibility of disease? You touched on. A bit, Andy, but can you elaborate? Yeah, I mean, and there was a huge, I mean, again, I'm going to talk mainly about the Mediterranean world. I mean, there was a huge division. Um, by the time you get into the, by the time you get to the 1300s, the Black Death, I'm going to take that as a sort of example here. Um, certainly in the, in the Christian West, um, the, the idea of contagion, I mean, everybody thought it was a punishment from God. I mean, everybody thought it was a punishment in some, in some form. Um, but, but, but the sense of it being con that, that, the, 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 the contagion of there was some form of person to person transmission and therefore if you separated people um, then that then you would reduce it um, that notion certainly begins in uh, in response to the black death it, it's a, it's interesting a little bit different in Islam in Islamic societies where where they um, essentially Islamic clerics denied contagion um, and um, as, as a sort of, there was no person to person transmission. This was literally a direct divine event. Um, and uh, therefore, it's one of those weird things where it sort of sounds like, well, the Christians were obviously more advanced. They were moving more towards science and stuff. Yeah, um, but actually the consequences were in, in much of the West, people, it, 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 been, it justified the abandonment of people who were sick, um, whereas in Islamic society, it was it was um, you, you, it was it, it, it was considered um, uh, 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 sinful to actually leave to, to flee the disease. Um, you, you had to stay and, and 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 care for people who were sick. And so, uh, so the, the 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 road to to a scientific understanding is not it, it, it has it has some other consequences. Um, these are not sort of straightforward, straightforward processes. Um, in terms of really understanding microbial transmission, um, you know, I'm thinking cholera, um, John Snow in London in the 18, in the 1850s, um, the, the prevailing, the prevailing theory there was the miasma, miasma theory that it was transmitted through, through bad air. Um, Snow was the first person literally by mapping an outbreak in, in the Soho district of London and, and, and correlating the, plain, the, the points of outbreak to a, to a specific water pump to be able to trace it to, to contaminated, contaminated water. Um, so, you know, you could see how that, that sort of knowledge imperfectly and over time starts to, starts to sort of build a, a more a more thorough understanding of, 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 the vec of the vectors of transmission. Having said all that, um, I mean, there's still a huge debate. I mean, it's, I, I don't know, I shouldn't say that. It's, it's, it's almost resolved now amongst historians, but for many years, there's been a really major debate about whether the, um, w whether the, uh, whether the plague of Justinian, the Black Death, and then the, the, the third um, bubonic plague pandemic in the 90, in the in the uh, late 1800s and early 1900s. You know whether they were even the same disease, and um, they were described differently by doctors. Um, uh, so the mode, the sort of vectors of transmission um, of rats, fleas, 
you know, those, that sort of, that w w was, was disputed. Um, and they were thought of, many historians argued that they were actually three completely separate, se separate diseases. It's only, it's only in the last, I don't know, five, five or so years, once they started to be able to do um, uh, uh, archeological uh, uh, DNA on, 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 uh, on, mm. on tooth pulp, um, that they've actually been able to show that it was um, Yersinia pestis. Um, the bacteria in, in all of these in all in all of these outbreaks. So I mean, there is a there's an interesting convergence of the of the sort of of, of, of uh, epidemic science and 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 applying that um, and DNA and apply and apply DNA sequencing and applying that to the historical evidence. I mean, we're I, I would say this is a very um, this is a period in which a sort of expansion of of historical knowledge is. Is uh, is really accelerating. It, uh, there's a couple of interesting articles on that, and if anyone's interested in, in shooting me an email, I'll be happy to share sh sh share some stuff with you. Um, Great. We have another couple questions, Andy. Okay. Kathleen Harper asks, "How did these prior pandemics ultimately resolve? How does it inform us as to what we might expect as to how long COVID will be with us?" Big question. Um, <laughs> Well, I mean, there's a couple of different answers, to, a couple of different aspects that I'd answer. I, I, in, in, in terms of the Black Death, I'm going back to that, it basically, it, it, the, the epidemic basically subsides when, when, when it's not really herd immunity, it's basically when, 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 when pretty much the entire human population that was that was most susceptible um, is, is killed, has is di is died. Um, I, I just read an article the other day from Scientific American, and actually quite interesting, which is, which is doing, which is just, which has been doing um, uh, uh, some uh, DNA work on bodies, skeletons from graves in, 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 in London from the next hundred years after the Black Death, and, and, and and, and it's noticeable that people actually live about 10 years longer on average uh, after the Black Death. Um, so it's totally possible that, that, that there was a certain, some genetic predisposition, strength of the immune system, et cetera, um, which the Black Death actually acts as a sort of gigantic instrument of, of, of natural selection and, 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 and the immune systems and general health actually improves significantly over the over the following over the following period. So it's not really immunity, but it's the 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 the, the people who do survive actually actually over the next generations actually do um, genetically are, are, are their, their immune systems are, are stronger. So I mean that's that's one side of it. I mean the other side is 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 the question of the question of herd immunity. I mean, I hate the I hate the phrase herd immunity applied to human populations because thinking of humans as a herd is is not necessarily the I, anyway. You get the point. Um, but 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 undoubtedly, um, the, the, these these at a, the the influenza epidemic in, in 1918 1919 at a, at a certain point, uh, although it comes back I think three times. The second wave is actually larger than the first wave, um, but at a certain point. Um, the level of the level of immunity of people who've already had it and and and, and survived um, basically uh, has the effect. That, I mean, it's the same thing as sort of spreading out the population, right? In, decreasing population density. Um, so it does. I mean, it sometimes you know burns itself out. Again, not necessarily the, the the best analogy, but but that idea. What does that mean for the? What does that mean for coronavirus? I have no idea. Um, I mean, we're still at very low levels of herd, of herd immunity, um, which uh, but that, or, that or an effective vaccine are the only two. I mean, that's the only way you actually eliminate it from a, from, from a, from a population. Um, I, 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 I'm probably going to annoy a bunch of people, but it seems to me that we're going to have to learn to live with this for a while. Um, I, I think it's not even necessarily waves, but... But, but something that becomes endemic with, with periodic, with periodic flare-ups. And, and of course, we don't know yet the degree of genetic, um, the, the modification of the RNA uh, of the, of the COVID-19 itself. Uh, that's, that's still a totally open question. Um, so I, 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 I don't know. I don't want to get too deeply into speculation on that, but. Uh, Thanks, we have, um, we have one more question. 
Um, Peter Slocum asks a question, can you discuss more thoroughly the British scientific methods used in India that alienated the Indian population? Yeah, sure. I mean, basically, um, basically this was an, these were attempts to, to, um, to control cholera by cleaning neighborhoods, um, by enforcing, uh, by, by enforcing quarantines, um, I mean, this is pre, this is, this is pre -vac vaccination, although you could see some of the same factors continuing. I mean, I'm talking here in the, in the early 19, in the early 1900s. Um, and, uh, you know, the British attitude was that this, that, you know, they had the, they had the scientific knowledge. They had, they were, they were there to help the, to, 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 to raise up the poor natives and, uh, you know, if the poor natives didn't agree, then uh, then they, these, the measures had to be enforced with with, with, with with greater with greater with greater severity. So, you know, that was that the, the, that was provocative of religious opposition, other and, 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 and other and other forms of opposition, which of course also factors into political opposition to Brit, to, 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 to British rule. Um, so, what appears at a certain level as sort of an irrational or, you know. Um, uh, 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 sort of backward-looking kind, 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 kind of a reaction. Actually, um, you know, was really was really more about this response, this this uh, this hostility to to the imposition of to the imposition of British rule. Even even where arguably, arguably, certainly from their own point of view, the British thought they were acting in the best interests of the of, of the of the Indian of the Indian population. So there's there's actually quite a lot of stuff written on that. And again, I'll be happy to. To, uh, to, to, to share reference with that for, for anyone who's interested in following any of that stuff up. Great, thank you. Um, it looks like it's about 7.55. If we don't have any more questions, maybe we'll, um, we'll wrap up here. Um, uh, if there's anybody else who would like to make a comment, um, you can um, put that in the chat and we can, we can open it up if there are people interested otherwise. We'll wrap up for this evening and introduce what's going to happen next week. So in the absence of any comments in the chat, um, Andy, if you will stop sharing your screen. I will. There we I go. will go back to the screen that I had shared um, and remind people um, of what so they have to look forward to. Um, and so next week will be Women at the Helm, brought to you by Susan Evans McClure, who's the executive director of the Lake Champlain Maritime Museum. It is an interesting conversation um, about how women's leadership has shaped the Champlain Valley, specifically. And following that will be Microplastics in Lake Champlain, um, brought to you in part by yours truly. My, okay and um, a colleague, Danielle Garneau, who is a researcher from the Center for Earth and Environmental Studies at Plattsburgh State. Quite interesting data there. The following one in October, at the end of October will be um, about the John Brown statue in North Elba. Quite an interesting comparison or conversation about um, history and memory. Um, and then there will be no Lyceum. Um, that will for, uh, for the election night dinner. Returning on the 10th, an intro to agroforestry, and then on the 17th, um, uh, an update on climate change in the Adirondacks by Kurt Steger. So